This is going to win. This will, If you can figure out how to spear one shot someone, you're just going to gain hundreds of rating immediately. We have below average arms warrior tries to climb rating unsuccessful. First thing, already what I'm seeing, our UI looks good. What doesn't look good, unless this is our keybinds that aren't showing, like we're not even in a stance right now. So I don't know how you're just not, not in a stance by default, but I think we do have a stance button right here, but we have two different keybinds for stances and okay, that, that's fine. Our UI looks good. We're already playing dwarf. I don't know if we're playing the right talents or if we have the right gear, but so far, our, our race looks good. UI looks good. Let's take a look. Q pops. Oh, Insta, Insta accept too. Okay, let's zone in. Okay, let's move our camera over here. We got our frames, class colors. We have all the right add-ons. I don't know what spec this rogue is playing. If there's only vanish and kick showing here, or maybe we gotta we gotta utilize our add-on a little better. I'm not sure. Fifth. All right, all right. Fifteen, sixteen hundred. Fifteen, sixteen hundred. I like what's going on. We're in a good lobby. We have a monk, feral priest, and we're playing warrior rogue. So right now, this lobby, this looks like a potential 6-0 lobby already. So let's see what happens. Oh, talents. Yeah, we know we have the exact ill mind of boo build, you guys. I use this exact build to climb to rank one solo shuffle North America as a warrior. Now, if anything, we should switch this talent to. Whoa, hold on. How do you have this and this? What are you missing? Is it this that you're missing? Okay, regardless, you would you would put this point in here. Bitter, I think bitter sucks. I don't like playing bitter. I think it's not good. I wouldn't use bitter. So our, ta our talents look pretty good. You should switch your talents right here. Uh, actually, every game on Warrior, the talents that you switch is you want to switch th this throwing thing. This is your shatter to get rid of blocks or immunities. Or you go wrecking throw versus like Warlock to break their dark pack shield. And on your talents, the main talents that I think you want to switch around, especially at lower rating when you're trying to climb, is you always keep Sharpen, you always keep Warbringer, you switch out this one. And you either switch this for Disarm or Short Blade Storm, ideally. So like since you're fighting Monk Feral, I think you're fighting, you would go Short Blade Storm to get out of Roots and shit. That's what you, that's what you want. So you're mo more mobile and it gives you more value on your... Uh, you, you proc Avatar with Blade Storm and you get an extra Unhinged, which is very important. So that's, that's Talents. We're looking at it again. And we're looking at it again. Okay. Okay, so like I said, there is no reason to have Wrecking Throw, right? It does not do anything. It's it's not good. We should have went for the auto attack speed talent. So we got 1% more haste and it would get like... Uh, it, it's like th this talent sucks into the into Priest. It's, even you might think, oh, Priest Shield? No. We'll see how many times you hit this button too. We're buffed up. We're looking good. We're in no stance. We're not in a stance right now. So ideally, you can start in D stance in the game. So we... Like, there... We got to start in a stance here. I don't know if we're going to go into a stance though. Let's see. We're talking back. Okay. Some decent typing speed as well. Put a comma in there as well. We'll take that. Honestly, I, I would just run down the priest. I would say we should go priest because it's hella, it's hella hard to survive warrior rogue. I would say go priest. Uh, but you guys said monk. That's fine. So if you want to go monk, you have to... Well, okay. Okay. Right. All right. Solo shuffle 101, right? We've got a rogue on our team. If we're not going to run down the healer, even if you are going to run down the healer, you want to make sure you let the rogue sap somebody. So I'm looking at it. You're the first guy out the gate. So I, I, I still don't see your rogue on your screen yet. But the chance for your rogue to sap someone, if you're already up here, just immediately goes down. Right? you got to tell, you got to let the rogue sap someone. You have to tell your rogue you need to sap somebody. And then we're going to hit someone else. Because you could do the... Because like I said in the Assass Rogue video, you can do the sap on one, blind off the sap, and there's a good chance you're going to win in the opener. So let's see. Oh, oh, okay, okay. He knows what's up. Of course he knows what's up. Remember the move. All right, he lets him get ahead. He's baiting him out. We're not in a stance though. That's not good. Fire alarm's going off. Okay, so if we're going to sap the priest and we want to go monk, we do have that Warbringer, which means when we charge, it does a lot of AoE damage. So there's a good chance we're going to break this first sap. So we got to be careful for that. Let's see. Okay, so I, I'm okay. So right here, right? So right here, I'm telling my, I'm, I'm going to say, what is our rogue doing, right? Okay, he this rogue has a good line here. He's running a good route up top, right? He's sprinting in. This rogue should have ran in and just ran right through here, right? Because the monk's not going to pull him out. But instead, the rogue delays, 
which ruins this entire opener. And then instead of just running through here to sap the priest, he sits there, he's hesitating, and then he goes left. He goes left to try to sap the priest, and you're already up here. So you're too close in the first place. You're too close right now. This guy jumped off the bridge, and his delayed opener right here makes it so the monk puts down a ring of peace. Already a terrible start. Terrible start now. When he could have ran in, sapped the priest, marked for death, killing the monk, and you could have speared him and killed him in five seconds probably. So that's the thing right there, right? The first three seconds of the game, it could have it could have potentially been ended. But now, now when I'm looking at this, what what do we do? I mean, what, what do we leap? Do we leap over the ring of peace? Do we try to charge in, get knocked back by the ring, break the sap? I mean, we're still not in battle stance either. We're spamming charge. Oh, oh my God! If this charge goes off, you're definitely breaking this sap too. If this goes off, I I mean, you have the button hit right here. So this this charge sucks. This is already not good. Unless you can maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Just as predicted, we get the charge. Sap is broken. We are already looking bad. That is not what we want to see right there. I'm telling. See, you got to know when you're playing that Warbringer, there is such a high chance you're going to break the CC. And now, now we have no rage. We broke all of our CC. Our rogue still has not kidney shot at anyone. So at this point, I would go for the fear. Okay, I would go for the fear. Now, if you fear, if you fear the monk. It's going to hit the priest, and the priest will run away. But if you fear the priest, it won't hit the monk. And then the priest won't move, which makes it harder to get the spear. So ideally here, I would try to get this fear, and I would immediately go for the Warbreaker spear sharpen one shot while your rogue ideally kitty shots this guy. That's what I'm hoping for here. We'll, we'll, we'll see if that happens. <laughs> okay all right okay so we didn't okay that's fine so we we've used our sap dr we ran in we've got we've got mez weak or on of course okay we're doing some damage here got more strike up charge back in he's fisting fear right here is good too triple fear right we want to put that priest on focus triple fear we're not in a stance though we got to get into battle stance here we, we need to be in battle stance or d stance i mean you just have to be in a stance like you're missing a lot of damage by not being in stance and you're taking a lot more so it looks like we're being one shot right now and like i said the fact that we didn't get our opening spear we're like already super behind in the game this pharaoh is pressing incarn this monk is putting 16 hands on us now and now we're getting triple cleaved let's see what we got Okay, so, and then uh, and then we, we trink it late, right? So our best play, like, we have to fear here. Like, this, we, we need to fear here. This is, this, is, this is a 100% fear situation, right? I would have used the fear earlier to get a good spear, but since we didn't do that, our next best play, if we're in this position, you know they're going to do their entire go. You can fear the priest, it hits everybody. Triple fear, they're all going to trinket it. Three trinkets immediately with this fear, and your team can like relax for a second, and it gives your teammate time to hit his shit. But we don't do that. We get swept. This is your trinket. You have to trinket this. This is trinket, fear the priest, or fear the DPS, and go priest, right? Because there's priest runs middle of the map. You're getting completely slaughtered in this. So fearing stops a lot of this pressure. And then honestly, I would trinket, fear, parry, and intervene healer. Because when you intervene your healer, it makes it so no attacks can hit them. And all the attacks will redirect to you, which you're immune to because you have parry up. And it stops this entire go from the Pharaoh and the Monk. For enough seconds to where you could probably survive it. So that, that's a big deal too. So we sit it for, for too long. And then we trink it in the, we trink it in the last 0.7 seconds, right? So if we're going to trink it anyways, just trink it that shit. Just throw it out, right? They don't have any CC. You're not going to get any You're not going to get CC'd. That's what's going on. So we trink it. Parry. Oh, okay. Okay, so... Okay, so we trinket and go for this spear. And on this spear, we, we, we did our damage rotation wrong. So what we're trying to do is... When you spear someone, you want a Warbreaker first. So you, you want a Warbreaker, the Priest, so you have the damage increase... And then you can press sharpen blade and then, then you throw the spear on them. Because then you, your initial hit of spear is going to hit a lot harder. And then you would press avatar. Which gives you the immediate unhinged. And ideally you'd put up sweeping strikes too. 
uh, so you get more value out of your unhinged. It's going to hit multiple targets. So this spear is a pretty weak spear, especially because it's just so late. And then your your rogue is also on the monk. So we're, we're already having a big targeting issue. And the game has only been going for like 30 seconds, right? But this already looks like this is a lost round because we're just so screwed right now. We linked. Zerk that fear. We still have intervene. We can intervene our shaman here. Intervene into rallying cry probably is our next next best play here. I think we're just dead in the next two seconds here. I don't I don't see how we survive this. We still have rally up too. Yeah. Okay. Tough round. Tough round. Bad start. Bad start. Bad start. But you can see that how different the game would have went if that first ten seconds goes better, right? We're mounted up again. We're fighting shaman, rogue, monk. That cleave is gross. We're checking details. So here we could go. We could go shaman. We could go Monk. I think we should triple kill them. We should triple kill them and train Rogue, probably. Triple kill, train Rogue, I think. That's what we want to do. But yeah, we're still not in stance. I don't know what the, what's up with that stance macro. Okay, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. So, 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 okay, okay. You're fighting a Rogue. You run in immediately to get combat, right? Because the, so last round, when you had the Rogue on your team, you ran right, which gets you in the game closer. But now that you don't have the Rogue, you're going left. Which makes it way easier for your teammate to get sapped. Because if you run in to the right middle, you immediately try to heroic throw somebody to get in combat, and then you can deny sap. So this is already you're running the wrong way here. We want to go, we want to go middle. Priest got sapped, right? Okay, so now when we see the priest get sapped, we could we we could just charge in and try to go for an early blade storm to try to shut down the rogue's first kidney shot on us. Right, so we would so if we if we saw the sap committed to our charge and blade storm, we would not be kidneyed right now, and then we're immediately killing the shaman. So this first kidney, I would sit this, and I wouldn't worry too much about it. But then I'm looking to get a big stormbolt spear on the rogue right after, while ideally our feral is you know dicking with these people. So let's see. I would parry off this probably, disarm. So first global in disarm here. Ideally, as you go into D stance, you'd ignore pain. And you'd put up a piercing howl to try to AOE slow everyone here. But we could just parry this if we want. Okay, so we fear DPS. That's fine. Rogue evasions? Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, so we avatar here without spear as well. So we, so what we should have done here is... we. The, so, okay. So we get this double fear, right? The rogue trinkets the fear and has evasion up so what we should do is we just wait for evasion to fall we don't press any offensive cooldowns because this guy is a million percent dead guys if you play rogue have you ever had a warrior spear you with every single cooldown with no evasion up what happens you you, you, just, you just explode like you you die literally instantly so if we just waited here instead you sent your avatar you don't want to press avatar ever until you're about to spear. So if you just wait right here five seconds, instead in this time what you do is you overpower the rogue because it does damage and it builds up for the big mortal strike. So the second his evasion has gone, you can warbreaker into a sweeping strikes, into a spear, into a sharpen, into avatar, and you blade storm and one shot the entire team and the round's over instantly. And there's no chance this guy's living. But instead, we sent it right here, right? We, we do the Warbreaker in Avatar. We're trying to one-shot right into the evasion. And we don't even get our spear. Now, everything is off, off basis here. Oh, my God. Look, and he, he vanishes out. He spirit links anyways. It would have been... The whole team would have died. The whole team would have died. Oh, man. We spear now. Okay. They're still... They're, the whole team is still dying anyways. Look at all these executes. Like... Oh, leap back up. This is where you leap up. You can leap up. Yeah, you're going for it right here. Nice charge in. Oh yeah, the, like you get you all, with all that going wrong, you still almost triple killed them. When you're disarmed, you should be ignore painting. Got to ignore pain. Just get that on cooldown. I don't know if you have parry still, but you can parry the death mark, or or dwarf this. This is when you use your dwarf racial. This is insane to dwarf racial all this. Yeah, we dwarfed it. Nice. And parried. Yeah, really good. And this 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 guy's just fucked. We stormbolted the rogue. At this point, you could choose to stormbolt the shaman too, because the, the rogue's already so screwed. Because he, he has no vanish, he has no evasion. You can just stun the healer and they're just immediately dead as well. 
Ignore pain off this. Rally, okay. We just gotta keep attacking that rogue. Gotta get back on that rogue. We have leap again. Oh, we gotta leap up. Oh, we gotta go on the monk. Go on the monk. That's fine. Kill the rogue. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter what you're hitting. Because they're so far behind anyways. Right? But you could have won this game in 10 seconds again. So that's fine. All right. Now we got Monk Warrior. This is such a good warrior lobby. Like, the, you, you would just destroy all of these classes. But yeah, that's the thing. Like, warriors, like, you need to press ignore paint on cooldown. And then, yeah, you want, you want to be in a stance. We, but I guess his stance macros were bugged. So that's why he's not in a stance. But yeah, got to ignore pain on cooldown. And you're piercing howl on cooldown too. Piercing howl... Yeah, Piercing Howl is like a 70% slow. It's insane. Who do you want? Rogue? Yeah, hit enter. Nice. Maybe. Sean. All right, yeah, it's good. Good targets. We did the same thing again where we didn't run in to try to get combat. Especially on Blade's Edge Arena, the most cheese map in the game in a solo shuffle. You you run in and immediately try to deny the sap. If you deny the rogue sap, your chances of winning literally double. Imme like immediately. Like, if you've ever played a healer in Solo Shuffle and you get sapped, you just assume you're going to lose the round instantly. So if you can stop the sap by running in, it's just, it's just so huge. Yep, the, the Pharaoh messed up that thing anyway, so... At this point, you could just charge in the Shaman and then start building up overpower stacks to go rogue when he comes out with a Leap, Stormbolt, Double Spear, Double Kill him. But we'll see. We chose, we chose to go back on the Feral. Overpower... Oh, he disarms. So a piercing howl is when you 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 piercing howl while disarm right because there's nothing else to press and you ignore pain. And then two, when 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 rogues are throwing out disarms like this and wasting defensive cooldowns, you will literally destroy these people because then they can't stop your spear. Oh man, we see the oh my god, he just got leg swept and he trinkets. Another thing we can do is just wait for our Stormbolt and he can't get out of it. He's getting smoked in the spirit. We double fear. We have parry up. We're taking a lot of damage here. Oh, see, yeah, once again, we sent the spear just way too early here. We don't need to spear right now. We have to wait for our Stormbolt. If we wait to Stormbolt this guy and then do our entire spear one shot. Guys, I think a lot of warriors, they don't know the spear one shot. They don't know how to actually get the damage off or the timing on it because... This is the first person I've watched play Solo Shuffle. And the biggest thing on why Warriors can win in Solo Shuffle is because if you can get a good spear off. I think that's the biggest thing. See, so we got the spear. We're trying to work it. Okay, getting those overpowers up. We need to get Sweeping Strikes up. You want to press Sweeping Strikes all the time in Solo Shuffle. It is so big because this makes it so your Mortal Strikes are hitting two targets, your overpowers, your executes... So you're getting the execute buff on multiple people. You're getting multiple fatal marks up. And you're getting more value out of your blade storms for your automatic mortal strikes. So you have to basically hit sweeping strikes all the time. And even though it's on global, best time to use it is when you charge. Because you can do it mid-charge global. The warrior one shot is... Uh, here, I'll log on my warrior. I'll show, you. I'll show you guys. This is what you want to do. Like when you're playing a warrior and you're trying to one shot someone with a spear is you, you war breaker first. You have to start with war breaker. So I'll log on the warrior and I'll show you on a target dummy the best way to do it. This is going to win. This way, if you can figure out how to spear one shot someone, you're just going to gain hundreds of rating immediately. Okay, so you want to be in battle stance. You can start in D stance too. You can start in D stance is fine because you can switch stances in blade storm. So ideally, when you start the game, you can get two overpower stacks up because that increases the damage of your mortal strike. So what you do is you charge in. In the middle of charge, you activate sweeping strikes. And then you can sit in D stance for all this. This is fine. So you charge, sweeping strikes. You then war breaker. And then you press sharpen blade. And then you put spear bastion on the target. And then you press avatar on use trinket. And then that is going to make it so... You're going to immediately go into your unhinged blade storms, and then you switch to battle stance once you start blade storming. Right? So I'm going to charge, sweeping strikes, war breaker, sharpen blade, spear, into avatar, stance switch. That's just, so it looks like this. So charge, sweeping strikes, war breaker, avatar, spear, stance switch right now. Boom. And then that's the one shot. And what that does. Is it makes it so you get a huge initial hit of Spear Bastion. Because you already have Warbreaker up. So they're taking 30% more damage. And then your Mortal Strike is going to be empowered by Sharpen Blade. And you're going to be cleaving multiple targets. 
and you get the blade storm damage. So just that one spear did you know six hundred thousand damage to one target. So if you do that in a solo shuffle, especially at lower rating, you're gonna hard carry every game because everyone will die immediately to it. So that's the one shot because then you're getting the warbringer damage as well, which is which is also huge. So that's that's, that's what you that's what you want to do, and that and that's how it's done. So if you can figure out that one shot, you're gonna win so many more games. It's insane. It's insane that that you have to do that combo, guys. I I, I didn't I figured out that combo and I gained. A thousand rating. I, I was I climbed up immediately. You get stunned the second you press avatar. Wrong, because you're blade storming, so you're immune to stuns. And then you can also blade storm out of CC if you do it well. Macro sweeping into charge. You don't always want to macro sweeping into charge. And it's it's not. Uh, you just want to make sure you have sweeping strikes up because sweeping strikes last 15 seconds. So you can also sweeping strikes and eventually set it up because all you need is like three good seconds to kill someone. And it's it's just it's massive. Like th this is why you win games. Spear is so important. I can't even believe it. What about Stormbolt? So yeah, when you do when you when you have Stormbolt, you would ideally just charge Stormbolt, right? So you want to have sweeping strikes up before you get the the Stormbolt, but you you charge Stormbolt Warbreaker. You can go battle stance into the spear sharpened blade avatar. Why do you start in D stance? You could just start in D stance if you're dying, but you can also just sit in battle the whole time too, so it's one less button to press. And you want to make sure too, like if you are in D stance and you drop the spear, you're getting that damage reduction from D stance. I always get insta CC'd on spear or disarmed. I think this is another mistake a lot of warriors make is they think that you need to run in and press spear legit in the first three seconds of the game. You don't have to do that, right? Like we saw every round so far, if if this warrior just waited like 20 seconds to one shot someone, he could, they had no defensive cooldowns. They can't be stopped. They can't be peeled and they'd get destroyed. That's what, that was my problem on warrior. I kept thinking I need to press spear on my first charge. And it's like, you don't need to do that. Instead, you overpower and you stack up all your damage buffs so your spear is going to be even better in like 20 seconds, right? I mean, it's, it's just, you just got to wait a little bit and it's going to be insane. Warbreaker Blade Storm. We don't have, we, see if we had sweeping strikes right here. Oh my god, everything is just getting destroyed. We need to, also, you can ignore pain in Blade Storm. Another easy button to press while you're in Blade Storm. True thing that resub? I think we're dead here. Yeah, we're, so we're dead here. Yeah, we gotta hit ignore pain on cooldown. Ignore pain on cooldown. It's so huge. It is insane. And we have our impending victory to heal as well. But ignore pain is gonna be your best heal by far. So we got priest. I would literally just charge in and charge the priest. Charge the priest, go rogue. Because there's a chance too, if you charge the priest, you're gonna warbringer out the DPS because they're probably gonna run next to him, right? So let's see what we do. We wanna go rogue though. Rogue is definitely a good target to go. Gotta run middle, right? Gotta run middle. Try to avoid that sap. And then, yeah, you start in D stance versus rogues too, but yeah, we're not in stances on like the whole video. Sap, Zerker that for sure. Zerker, charge in on sap. No point to hold it for anything unless you get feared, but even then, yeah, like as a warrior too, you don't like, you say you jump back like this, like right here, you're kind of, you run in and then you should just charge in immediately, but you turn around. There's no point to turn around here, right? Like, what are we what are we even hoping for here? You just charge in and get in combat immediately. That's what you need to do. Such because you're fighting a rogue and a monk. They can't just, like, kill you instantly, you know? So you could have just charged in, avoided the sap, and you would have had Zerker for the fear from the priest anyways, which makes it even easier to run this priest down. And then if a priest is walking into you like this, you just go priest. You could just go priest. Your feral is already right there. Or you could fear a priest, go monk. I mean, there's so many things you could do. It's just that... You, you can just run in and fear and spear. And if you can just do that, it's like the same thing on Rogue. I'm like, you got to sap blind and press death mark. Same thing on Warrior. We got legs up. Huge knock. Off this, intervene. Intervene Shaman, right? You could intervene parry right here. Because intervene, like I said, is another cooldown that people don't use. It's one of the best defensive cooldowns in the game. A lot of Warriors just don't press it. Huge intervene on your healer makes them take no damage and they're forced to go on something else. And you could just parry because it's this anyways, because you're dwarf for the death mark, so you're not even worried about it. Would have been so huge here. Did a C. We did another weird spear here, right? Like if I was trying to set up a spear right here, what I would do is I would start overpowering. You, you start by overpowering instead of just sending mortal strikes because you're building up a big mortal strike effect. So you're sweeping strikes right now, overpower, overpower after you have your parry intervene, and then you fear the priest, 
right? You fear the priest, so you get a triple fear again, and then you stormbolt the rogue into the warbreaker, into the spear avatar sharpened one shot that we just talked about. And if you did that, teams getting triple killed, they're dying immediately. There's just nothing they can do because people were not going to react to the damage. We're just not getting the damage off properly, and that's why nothing's being one shot. So here we send the spear. Gives everyone free time to react because no one CC'd. Priest even paints up the wrong guy. So it would have been crazy if he just feared, stunned, and then did the spear. With Warbreaker up that we didn't press either. Yeah, when you see like Fist of Fury or Evasion, you have to overpower through it. That's the best button to press because it's guaranteed going to land. Can ignore pain here. Just got to press ignore pain on cooldown to help your team. Oh, yeah, I so see we died. We had a rally, too. Yeah, no, we know he's not in a stance. We know he's not in a stance. That's a mistake. We're not even talking about stance dancing or anything. But, yeah, for those that missed it, guys, this is the warrior one shot again, ideally, is you could you could just, like, you could just charge in to start the game, get two overpowers if you want, and then you could go for the sweeping strikes into the charge, warbreaker, spear, sharpen, avatar. And that is how you do the one shot, and that's all the damage. You get all the blade storm. You get all the mortal strikes hitting. And that's how you're going to kill him, man. That's that's what it is right there. Boom, that's it. Have sweeping strikes up. Charge in. Warbreaker. Drop the spear on them. Press sharpen blade. And then you hit avatar with every cooldown. And it destroys them. MS. No, the MS gets applied from your blade storm. You, you should just stack up the bigger overpower damage. So the damage is even higher up. And you're just going to one shot him. Because your mortal strike will hit for 150k. Yeah, because these lobbies, man. If you just put sweeping strikes up, you're just going to kill everything on the team. Like, you'll just do so much damage. It's going to be ridiculous. Oh, right, let's see what we do. We have the rogue on our team. We could go for the sap again. Sap, shaman, go monk. Shaman just walks in. What is going on here? Sap, monk. Walk up. Oh, see, we first global. First global has just got to be overpower. It's got to overpower to get our damage buffs up. There it is. I'm already looking to get a triple fear. I'm already looking at triple fear here. You could triple fear the DPS, go shaman. I mean, you could fear the shaman, fear everything here, and go monk. I mean, there's a lot of options. Oh, see, we did we did a, a weird spear again, right? Like this spear is not going to kill anyone. We, like a lot of the spears we're doing are, are just like it might look like it's good, but we could just start with the warrior fear into the storm bolt, and then we spear, right? Because if you storm bolt then spear. Everyone has to trinket. They're going to panic and press every single button. When you do spears like this with no damage up and, and you're like in a weird position where you're not in any control of anything and you're doing it in the wrong rotation, no one will die to this. Six up to the spear one shot. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's a game changer how much damage you're losing from it. You can't trinket the spear. You're, you're stuck in the spear. That's why it's like it's so brutal to, to, if you can do it right. Yeah, because honestly, like, I'm watching this whole gameplay. All the gameplay in between doesn't even matter. It does not even matter. All, all that matters is hitting the spear. If you can get a triple fear and you do the spear one shot, I swear to God, you're going to win every game. It's, re it's insane. Disarming the monk stops them from pressing Fist of Fury. So it's actually good at times to do that because Fist of Fury makes monks have a 100% parry chance. So a lot of monks will try to save defensive cooldowns in hopes that they can Vista Fury. So there's a good chance you can just cheese monks, right? Imagine you disarm a monk and then spear them, right? What are they going to do? They have to just sit there and eat it. They can't fist it to a unit. So it's huge. Tell us what's good. You know your warrior? I, yeah, I'm telling you, the warrior is like... This is only the first version we've seen. We, we, we'd have to watch another person play warrior to see... Maybe if they're a little higher rated, like well, this guy just gets destroyed here. Because all these games, you could literally win these games in 20 seconds with a good spear. Because everyone would just overreact and you would just do so much damage. It would be crazy. Disarming DK or DH. Disarming DK stops uh, death strike healing. And disarming DH doesn't really do that much anymore. Wait, like, yeah, let's see if we can get into a stance and everything. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Because this is a weird lobby and it's a weird map and it's a super cheese map and it's super quick. No, you can't disarm through Fist of Fury. You'd have to be from the backside. So ideally, how you, how you stop Fist of Fury is you Stormbolt it, right? So that's when you would need, when you use Stormbolt on a Monk, usually. Disarm on a Monk is a waste since they run Glimpse. Not exactly, because not, not everyone saves it for Glimpse, and you can still get value out of it. But yeah, this map sucks. This map is really fast-paced, and it's really cheesy, because everyone just runs in the middle of the bridge, and it's, like, hectic. Learning Warrior first expansion. Should we watch another Warrior? Oh yeah, this is a hard lobby. All right, let's take a look. Let, let's look at another Warrior right now. I don't know what rating we're at. At first glance... 
Our UI is looking pretty good. Looks clean. We're on round three, so we're fighting. Yeah, this is a tough lobby. So we're playing mage. Triple caster lobby as a warrior is disgusting. It's really hard to attack anything. And your spear go matters way more because that's the only chance you're killing something. Especially versus Druid. So yeah, we're in battle stance right now. Honestly, if I'm fighting this, I would have the wrecking throw talent. I, I don't know if we're specced into that. You go wrecking throw for the warlock shield. So versus this, it's just hella annoying because you could try to just go lock or you could try to go mage. Or you could commit going Druid. Because if you go Druid, it sucks if you spear this guy because he's just going to trinket Tranquility. Which means you'd have to go back and kill this guy. Otherwise, you would never want to spear the Druid, right? So it, it, you got to make all your spears are big here. Let's see what we do. So trying to bait Locke into portaling and he never does. Yeah, because some people say that Warlocks can just gateway out of spear. And that's not even that big of a deal because there's a lot of times where you could get... All you need on Spear is like one second in Spear to just one-shot someone. Okay, so we're in Battle Stance. I like this. Could start in Battle, could start in D. Wherever you... We'll see, we'll see. Okay, so I'd put like the... Okay, everyone's in Stealth. We just looked at our talents and see our talents here. So we got Short Blade Storm, which is very good. We're not playing Wrecking Throw. Wait, what is this talent build? What is... How do we have two points in... Oh, dude. You're... Oh, my God. You, so, okay. All right. So, already huge flaw in the talent build. You should not have two points here. You put this point right here. This talent is Spear of Bastion's instant damage is increased by 50% and the rage generation. As you can tell, on the first attack on the dummy, or the second... Our Spear of Bastion hit for 117k. So you're missing out on 50 plus thousand damage on that first tick of Spear. Which is even better on Warlocks who gate out of Spear instantly, right? So that's already a huge flaw in talents. And that fucks up your one-shot potential a lot already, right? So that's already a problem. Stop ready to go crit verse on Warrior. So yeah, we should have had that. So you, you should have one point in here and then one point in Wrecking Throw or Shattering Throw for the Mage. So that's what you want to do right there. Yeah, you, you use both these talents. These are huge talents. Huge. Everything else is fine. Charge in. Slow. So I'd be D stance right now. I'd already be in D stance. You want to D stance and get ignore pain up first. First thing you're looking at. First thing you're looking at. Because right now we're in battle. And we're getting, we're getting just clapped. Because right here, when we charge in, judging by where they're standing... I would honestly just go for the Fear Druid. It would hit the lock. And then I'd go for the Spear on the Mage. And then you probably can get an Ice Block in the first five seconds of the game. So we charge in. Overpower. Overpower. Oh, so Druid's on top. You go maybe even a double Spear. But you, like right here, you have to fear something. You got to fear something. And you have to Spear. Because you're fighting Double Caster. It's disgusting. And you need to win quickly. I don't know if we're going to fear though. Let's see what happens. We got Bash. He has Alter Time up. So, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Really low value spear, right? Really low value spear. Like, like that we, like, that was just not, not what we wanted to see. Not what we wanted to see. Because we see the Mage press Alter Time. When I see this Alter Time up, I'm stacking up my overpowers. Because I'm, I know I'm going to shit on him off this altar time, right? He's going to heal back to full HP. And then you press everything on him. Because this time you should be walking at the druid to fear him right here. Now you almost did. You had the thing. But then you try to spear this guy. And you can also storm bolt the mage. Guys, to land the spear on the mage, you storm bolt him. You force him to blink. And then you charge and hit the spear, right? Because otherwise there's a good chance he could just blink out of the spear like he does right here. Right? But if you storm bolted him, he couldn't do that. And then it's just immediate game changer. Perfect. So let's see. We got a, we got a spear go here. Got to hit a... Uh, yeah, I, I would be in D stance just for all this. I would just be D stance. Like, we still haven't feared anything either. Yeah, you, you just switch D during all this time. You just take less damage. It's also good to throw out spell reflect on cooldown versus like caster shit. Because it gives you a 20% damage reduction to all magic effects when you press it for 5 seconds. And you get the Reflect of the spell. No, he blinked out of the spear. Yeah, we use Reflect. We should just be D-Stance right now. D-Stance slow and go for a Fear. Fear this guy right here. I mean, this is Fear. Go Mage, right? Good Blades from here. 
Stormbolt the Druid. We're still in battle stance. But we're thinking that resub. I'm glad you enjoyed the stream. Yeah, man, I, I I swear, like Warrior is is it's it's all about getting a good opener, man. You need to fear in the first 20 seconds of the game, and then you can ideally try to spear early too. And if you can do that, I swear to God, you're gonna win so many more games because there's no way you're forcing cooldowns on a warrior until you use your spear, right? Because like all this, the way the way the whole game is going right now is because we haven't feared and we didn't get a good spear in the start. So I have to like just sit back here, like get a sharpen up here. Coiled. I would leap fear. This is leap fear right here. Leap fear, get a block. Oh, we just gotta fear the druid. Just fear the druid. Fear him right now. Oh, we're gonna die. We're still not in desance. Oh, now we're just so in. Now we have no charge. We leaped in. We didn't get any pressure there because we didn't fear. Yeah, triple the R, fear the lock, like, right? I mean, that's just not what we need to see. We're still in battle stance, too. Like, we need to be in D stance for all of this. Now we're in D, okay? Yeah, now we're just kind of caught in the open with our pants down. Pretty awkward. And we're dead. Okay, tough round, tough round. Let's see how the next round goes. Okay, double mage. So we can go on Arcane or Frost. We don't. We still don't have the right talents. We need, we need to be Shatter. You need to be Shatter versus mages. You have to switch to it. Okay, so our right, not a good spear again, right? Like, guys, do, we need to put out a video on how to attack people as a warrior with the spear. I mean, I this is the second warrior we've watched. It's the same thing. We're just dumping the spear on him. And there's no chance we're killing this guy. How are we going to kill this guy in this spear? There's no chance in hell. And then we leaped in, which is not good. We don't want to leap in here. What you should do is you charge in to get the rage. You saved the leap to get the fear, right? You should have charged in, feared the druid immediately, and then there's a chance if this druid trinkets that you could one-shot him 100-0 by yourself in spear too. So you should have charged in on this guy. Because this spear, we need the spear to kill them. We're, we're using the spear to just like, I'm not sure what we're doing, man. So we spear. Yep. Bleak blade storm. Guy has full hots, full everything, and we still have no CC on the Druid. And now we're going to get one shot by this Arcane Mage. So we would, we would like, this, this is already bad. We need to be in D stance and not die right now. D stance, ignore pain. You would have been in D stance with this bash, and you had ignore up. Fear here. Got to be fear, fear right now, right? Just guys right on you. Okay, we're going Druid. Storm bolted him. Still no fear. Yeah, not got to fear. Guys, as a warrior, you need to use your fear in the first 30 seconds of every game. Honestly, you should start the game with fear, I think. It's the same thing as sap. If you leap to fear the druid, you want the mobility to catch the mage? Wrong. Like I said, every game at lower rating and soul shuffle could literally be won in the first 10 seconds. Right here, you charge in on this mage. Instead of leaping, right? You charge, and then look how close the guy is. Even when you leaped, you leap to the wrong spot. Because if you leaped, you should you leap over the mage to fear this guy. Because then when you fear the druid, the mage is going to get feared too. So you can just sit there and set up your spear with your warbreaker. Then you storm bolt him. Then he blinks. Then you charge him and one shot him. Like that's exactly what would happen. Oh, it would have been so good. Leap in, double fear. You set up the warbreaker on this guy into a, into a storm bolt. It forces him to blink out. Then you charge. He can't get away from the spear. Spear hits with the sharpened blade avatar in battle. One shot. Or it's nice block. But instead, we did a weak spear, no fear, and now, now our we can't kill anything. There's no way you're killing anything without a spear on a warrior. There's just no chance. So let's, let's get forward. And then right here, we should have just we should have just feared the druid instead of storm bolting him. It's good to storm bolt mages. Like you storm bolt the mage so you can charge him effectively, and he can't get out of it, and it makes spear easier to land. And we need to use a uh, piercing howl on cooldown. Piercing howl is our best slow in the game. It's good. Yeah, I got a free ice block. I wouldn't even go switch through here. I would just stay on this guy. And now we're going to get Glacial, right? And now you charge. And now you're losing a gap closer because there's no point this guy's not going to die. Hit the Druid. He could go Druid there. Could hit Druid here because he's running to Pillar and you could actually line a sight. But when he's in the middle and you have to charge him, that's a bad charge. But it's good to hit him here. We're still not in D stance for all this too. I just sit D stance for you getting clapped. 
Oh man, we just go on the we go on the frost mage. So free to go frost mage. Good warbreaker. I'd blade storm this. Oh yeah. See, it was a little late on the blade storm. If he did sweep strikes, blade storm right there. They both just get smoked. You ever seen a push in? Piercing howl. Piercing howl. I think we just feared into Trank. Yeah, we're kind of we're kind of just standing there taking it in a weird spot right now. Yeah, I use leap too. Now we're just gonna get destroyed by this mage, I think. Oh my god. Man, Warrior does look hectic watching other people play it, because it's just all about that spear setup. And it's crazy that like when I watch all this stuff going on, it like it doesn't even matter. Like I've played, I've played enough warrior to, to just feel like if I if you don't have if you're not doing the spear right, like everything else is just irrelevant. Like it just doesn't matter. Like you could you could literally not attack anything for until your next spear and it wouldn't affect the game. I think. And like this spear again, this spear sucked yet all the time, and we didn't have any damage up for it. We had no, we had yeah like. Yeah, we need to be in D stance for any of this. Oh man, charge act. Okay, got the win, got the win. Guys, one more time on the warrior one shot, okay? What we do is you have sweeping strikes up. You could charge and sweeping strikes mid charge if you want into a war breaker, into a spear, into sharpen blade avatar one shot. That is how you do it right here. Boom, boom, boom. As fast as humanly possible. I did it too fast even because Val Drac and lag. I couldn't get the spear down. But that's how you do it, man. That's how you do it. You, 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 you got to hit the one shot, man. If you're not doing that, if you can figure out how to one shot someone, you're getting 500 rating, maybe more. Just from that one combo. Sometimes two warriors. Uh, let's see. This might be, this is last round, last round. Let's see what we got. You can't avatar before you spear because it blade storms you. So you have to just spear first. Lock mage. I would just charge it on the mage, honestly. Oh, uh, we're going to do a garbage spear again. Oh my god, I, I would trinket this shit. Stormbolt, Druid, spear his ass. Right? Trinket, Stormbolt, Warbreaker, spear, sharpen blade, avatar, one shot, Druid, trinket, trank, kill him next spear. Or, and the lock's dying too. So if you're locked, if this lock's already this low HP and you did the trinket, Stormbolt, charge, spear, the Druid, there's a good chance this Druid trinket tranks and the Warlock just dies immediately too. Druid ran into ring. Oh, we sharpen this guy. See, oh man, see now now we've already used kind of our one shot. We're doing a blade storm here. I would go Druid with Stormbolt. I mean, this is just got to be. Oh my! Whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah, see, like just another tough situation with spear. Everyone's clowning me in chat for missing spear, ladies and gentlemen. And you know, I, I'm playing warrior at 3300. Okay, so when you're seeing other warriors try to dump their spears and everything, there's a lot of setup involved. All right. The lag, look at his lag. Okay, I mean, he's lagging. Bad spear, though. Bad spear, right? I mean, we're, 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 we don't even want to spear this guy. We should have speared the druid. If we go on the druid, way better. Way better. And we still have fear. We just gotta fear this druid. Look how, oh man, the druid is standing on top of you. He's on top of you. We can't let him stand on top of us, ladies and gentlemen. We can't let it happen. Mm. This guy die? And he dies. 1800? All right. That's a dub. That's a dub. Guys, that was some good warrior review. Good warrior review right there. <laughs>